Patrick Dennis here from Spider Golf, and welcome to a Spider TV show with our guest, Lucas Nemetz, our Spider Tour Ambassador, and his longtime coach, Krista Bausick. Gentlemen, thank you very much for being here. It's a thrill to have you. Thanks for having us. Of hey, Cedric. Good. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing fantastic. Thanks. So, Lucas, uh, why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about you so they get to know you? And then Chris uh, yeah, Spider Ambassador. I'm using Spider App since uh, 2017, so right from the beginning. And I'm currently playing on the DP World Tour. Uh, finished the 22nd, 22 season as uh, 84th. And yeah, I'm about to start the 23 season already now in South Africa. And uh, yeah, we had some busy weeks together analyzing last season. And um, I can't wait to kick off um, the next season. And um, yeah, ready to, to get better. Sounds good. Sounds good. I like that. <laughs> Chris, how about the how about the coach? Tell us about you. Yeah, I mean, uh, hi guys. Yeah, I'm I'm quite some years in the golf now. I had a playing career myself in my younger days in the Challenge Tour. I never played the European Tour or DP World Tour, how you call it now, uh, myself. I was never as good as Lucas. But um, yeah, I had a I think I had a quite a nice career also as a professional golfer and went into coaching and started a couple of things um, with um, really looking, digging into biomechanics, um, doing a lot with putting, aim point, uh, many, many things. Um, I think I'm known for actually using every technical device there is in the market for, this, for the golf coaching. Uh, which doesn't particularly mean that I always use them, but um, I enjoy having the ability or the chance to use them if I need them. And yeah, I work with um, uh, players from all skill levels. Uh, of course, in this case, professionals like Lucas was overly, obviously my my number one player, of course, uh, the way he was playing the last couple of years now. And yeah, and um, working with some junior golfers and with... Um, just number of club golfers, so all, so basically everybody, and yeah, and I also run a, a pretty large YouTube channel in the German, in German, and, and English and, as well. You have English content as well. Yes, I'm starting now with an English it's YouTube coming. channel. <laughs> it's, it's, I have to tell it, it's at Basic Golf. It's it's coming, and yeah, and yeah, and I'm not in the social media and. Um, doing a lot of um, videos and stuff like that. And um, we're starting with um, um, online or also with paid content soon. So so that's what I'm basically doing next to my family and next to uh, my coaching. Yeah. And if I remember well, I, I remember exchanging on the beta version of Spider Golf because you're here from the beginning. Like Lucas said, you guys have been using the app since, <clears throat> since day one or even day minus one. And I remember us in Spain in an endpoint uh, seminar where I showed you, uh, I showed you the goods, and and you were like, okay, I want to dive right into it. I'm liking this. Let's start something, and let's get there. Yeah. Now we're here a couple of years later with uh, with some good achievements. So this is a good, uh, yeah, this is a good story. Good story to tell. Yeah, I mean, um, it's quick for the viewers. Yeah, um, I think that was 2016, uh, Cedric. Um, I believe so. Yeah. Yeah, we both yeah. Aim, we are both aimpoint uh, instructors, and and we met in Spain in the conference, and and um, obviously we have a very similar mindset, and uh, we became friends. And he, you talked about spider golf back then, Cedric. You had this idea of creating something really big for stats, and I was so excited because I was also into stats back then, but I didn't have a a program yet, uh, which I. I had an analytics tool which I could rely on to get good data. And you actually telling me, oh, I'm planning to do this and to this. And actually, I can remember we were like brainstorming for like probably six or seven hours, I think, that evening yeah. about how, how a perfect app would look like. Um, it's so, it was so fun to see uh, the development of Spadagolf and actually the things we were talking about in the restaurant, in the bar down there in Porto Banus in Spain, um, actually being in the in the program now with the grid, with the spider. And um, yeah, uh, it, it's been really fun to see it develop from the beginning. And, and obviously, uh, I uh, Lucas 
uh, Lucas and I started to work together in 2017. Yeah. So basically, when you just, I think you got out the better version. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And, I, and um, I asked Lucas, um, how come, where's your data? Where's your, where are your stats? And, and, and Lucas had something, but it wasn't, it wasn't really, it wasn't really uh, very efficient. Let's put it this way. And um, I said, we have to improve this. So we started uh, using Spatter back then already um, as an earlier adopter, as you would call it probably. Yeah. Um, yeah, we, um, uh, yeah. And we, and we went from there. I mean, just maybe to talk about Lucas and I didn't start full in uh, from the beginning. It was actually Lucas. I mean, he was always a very decent player. I actually knew him since he was a little boy. His dad, Gerhard, actually was my performance coach when I was a player still. That, 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 uh, Lucas was a little little boy back then still. So I was coming to Graz, town, town where Lucas lives. Um, his dad actually was coaching me. So, so um, that's, that's actually a family how business. <laughs> yeah, so that's actually how it started. And, and um, yeah, Lucas actually came to me because he had a putting problem. Um, yeah, we, we started off, um, he, had the pro he had the feeling there was some deficits maybe in his green reading, and that's where we started, and, and we worked on his putting. And actually, uh, his coach back then, Fred, um, he, he uh, left Austria, and he was without a coach, really. And, yeah, we, we worked ourselves into a relationship player coach relationship and so now we're here 2022 five years later the tp world tour um, i'm really happy the way it's going yeah, yeah exactly congrats, congrats to you both and like like chris said we, we started mainly with putting and then and then after a few weeks i kept coming to him learning had a lot of progress and, and then we started working on some chipping and he, and i thought i was really good in chipping and knew a lot and he was telling me new stuff, and I thought, hey, hmm, maybe it's actually pretty good also in, in other parts in shipping. <laughs> and yeah, uh, so it happened that now, yeah, after like, I don't know, one, uh, just a few weeks, we, I decided, okay, we do we do everything, and um, I think the progress has been, been really good, and not only in the putting, and... Um, the entire game. Yeah, so it's... So yeah. like, yeah, nowadays you need, everything needs to be good. I wouldn't say everything needs to be very good, but everything needs to be good, and some parts need to be very good. But um, especially when you compete at your level right now, for sure. Exactly. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's been a it's been a nice uh, way to get where we are now. But um, we're not stopping. <laughs> A good transition. Gentlemen, let's get right in. We're going to talk about the metrics. We're going to talk about spider golf integration into Lucas performance environment. But also, we're going to talk about that road that you guys have taken throughout the years from the Alps Tour to the DP World Tour, keeping your card and engaging that new season. And for that, we can see on screen the evolution of the scoring average from 2020 to 2022 it's been going down 70.7, 70.1, 69.7. It keeps on improving, and it's improving in all compartments and mostly on the driving and the putting that we're going to see uh, tonight. But, gentlemen, tell, t tell us a little bit about what was the main technical focus and, and what was the hurdles and, and how did you come about of keeping that improvement steady throughout the years? Do you want to talk, Lucas, or me? <laughs> uh, you, I mean, I, I start talking. I mean, first of all, 2020, everybody know it was it was uh, beginning of the year with all the COVID pandemic starting. And and I think personally, I mean, the stats, even for me, it's it's cool to see that improvement. It's it's quite a lot. If if you can do one shot in two years, it's it's massive. It is. Um, especially especially considering the 2020 play challenge tour and 2022 dp world tour where the courses are also tougher mm -hmm. so even if if my scoring average would have probably been a little worse mm -hmm. than 2021 i would have probably still played better golf also have to take that in consideration and yeah i think we used the, the time in 2020 really really well um also for me it was nice it's like a nice reset as well in the mind in the body and i think um yeah chris and i we just continued working on the right things but um chris knows more what we did <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, I mean, just from the technical side, I mean, Lucas has a brilliant golf swing, so it was never... <laughs> uh, also, when we met in 2017, and started our coaching player coach relationship, it was not like... Um, I mean, Lucas basically was on the tour already and lost his card, basically. That was the situation in 2017, yeah? So there were some things um, in his game which were, like, really good and some things which maybe needed some more yeah, consistency, maybe, or maybe a little bit... Um, a little bit... had to be a little bit um, more efficient. Uh, first, what we did, I'd say, is very, the very, very beginning was that we started to basically to have the attitude of only one ball shape, um, if I remember correctly, uh, Lucas was trying to shape the ball uh, according what where the pin was, and I just let him hit one stock shot. Um, I'd say roughly 95% of the times. I mean, just as a rule of thumb, you know, which can be broken, of course. But uh, that was a, th a thing um, we really did in the beginning. That's why we looked, so looked at the dispersion on Spider. Um, if he only hit one shot, like uh, we went for a fade back then, if that actually gets his dispersion closer together and more predictable, let's put it this way, more predictable. Exactly. And um, yeah, so, <clears throat> so we could see very nicely that actually his iron uh, proximity uh, was so good that he actually could play much more aggressive than he thought he could play. The players themselves know it. If you can't at least hit 170 minimum ball speed with the driver, you started to get troubles on the on the high level tour, so uh, it is a game of power. And I mean, Lucas is not two meters tall. Okay, he's a uh, not the tallest guy in the tour, uh, and he swings it quite decent fast. But we had to get him faster. <laughs> okay, let's put it this way. And uh, what we did is we did a lot of with um, um, working with pressure, the ground forces. Um, I, I really early it was uh, like. Actually, at the moment we started working, I bought myself force plates. I knew I cannot coach Lucas without having force plates. Gentlemen, let's get into Lucas's data. We were talking about the driving. Now we're going to see uh, his evolution throughout 2021 and 2022. And as we can see, this is the coach view of the app when we analyze multiple rounds. And we have the whole layout separated in five stroke gain compartment. And as we can see in 2021, Lucas's stroke gain off the tee was number four, and it was negative 0 0.287. The evolution, 2022, the driving off the tee became his first stroke gain and a positive one, plus 0 0.683. We have an improvement on the impact quality and also lowering the wasted shot and an increase in distance. And as we can see on the dispersion pattern, we had a slight right tendency, especially on the weak shots with a bad impact to the right that you guys have fixed. That tendency has now correcting itself. And on an eight meter radius, we had 40% of the shots inside that grid. And now we're at 50%. So increase of 10% on accuracy and efficiency. Also an impact improvement like we talked about. And there is also 1.6 meter in lateral dispersion that has been improved. So again, uh, improvement in driving efficiency throughout what I looked at and uh, what I told you guys. And of course, the great technical work and strategy work that you guys have done on this. Maybe you could uh, expand on this. Yeah, I mean, what we have been particularly working on, of course, is centeredness. Uh, you can see that the impact quality has improved over the years. Um, that had something to do with uh, Lucas' radius in his arms in the downswing. We've been always focusing on his backswing, um, about the way how he transitions his arms in the downswing. And he's very aware of his radius control in his swing. And, and I found that really helped his driving. Um, the, the boss you see on the right um, is typically a little bit of his shots off the toe or when wind comes in from the left um, where his fade shot doesn't work. Um, Lucas um, found out for himself that it's um, better to hit a draw into the crosswind and that also stabilized the whole thing a little bit. So, um, yeah, I would say that's uh, that. A couple other things. This was probably the reason why his driving has improved, yeah. 
Yeah, like I said, it's really an improvement in driving efficiency uh, because not only he gained distances, it, it's six meters, but like you say, with the injury, it could have been it could have been maybe a little bit more. And you know, ten meters is is difficult to gain uh, on a driving distance average. And plus, the proximity got better, so more distance, better proximity. That's that's the key. Uh, uh, yeah, that that's what that's what you're looking for. And yeah, now. There's a second, jumping, there's a also, there's a second thing maybe you, I want to uh, maybe talk about. If you're injured, that's the injury is a big thing, I think, for also for tour players. They're playing week in, week out. I mean, they're out there 25, 30 weeks sometimes. Uh, only tournaments, without the uh, coaching and without the going to trips. So it's, they're just traveling, traveling, traveling. And if you start to get injured as a tour player, um, that also means you cannot... Um, get a session scene where you actually try to hit balls hard because what actually these boys are doing out there they have sessions in between tournaments or between rounds sometimes uh, where they just go fast they try to hit it fast with intention yeah and if you're injured like lucas was now in uh, basically in july and august it was nearly two months um basically we have we're not able to do any speed training the last couple of months to be honest yeah and uh we're still being really really careful how to build this up now Again, but um, but uh, that's a big thing, you know. Um, if you don't have the intention of wanting to hit the ball far, it ain't gonna happen, you know. So injury is a big, big part, also for uh, elite golfers, you know. So better don't get injured. <laughs> and this is and this is what's great, and we're gonna transition on the second point that we're gonna talk about uh, this evening, which is the putting. Like you said, even with the injury and the months of. Uh, um, the confidence that was settling in with the good work, the good technical work and mental work that you guys did, that confidence got there and the result showed right when he got back uh, on the horse and he finished the, 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 the season strong to keep his card and actually improving. So that was, that was a really a key, uh, a key position. And that I saw as well on the, on the data um, when you see his putting, his putting is and has been since the start, like we talked about, his least performant uh, strokes gain compartment, but it was negative in 2021, and now it's turned positive in 2022. And what I like to see about this, and we exchange quite a lot on this, is his confidence and his mental aggressiveness on willing to make the putt, and especially under the gun. And as you can see here, this is the... This, this is a make percentage in birdie putts. So every putts that he makes for birdie, uh, we have the data. And we can see that there is an improvement between 2021 and 2022 on all distances except three to four meters. And when you know you can gain eight, nine, or even 10%, that is massive. And this is where it's not necessarily technique, but it's mental willing to go for it, willing to go and get it and get those birdies on the scorecard. And it, it was it was nice to see you guys did amazing work on this. And uh, I think we spotted that quite early. It was it, it, it was a long it was a long work, but it, it is paying off and it is paying week after week and it's getting better and better. Maybe you guys want to exchange a little bit about on that uh, putting improvement. Yeah well, I mean the improvement well, let's 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 say this different. Putting has always been the weakness of my game ever since. Uh, um, and since I started working with Chris, we, we put a lot of effort work into putting, and luckily it has improved a lot. It's still, I'd say, a weakness, but uh, I think we're on a really good way, a really good path. And with the stats that you're providing us and helping us, yeah, we literally found out together. All of us that I'm just not aggressive enough in, in a lot of parts. And um, we started working on putting more more two feet behind the hole than one foot. Um, and it seems like it's has paid off, especially on, on the short parts, one to two meter to three meters, which is the which are the most important parts. Um, yeah, so I'm really happy in the improvement that, that we've done there all together. Um, and the main thing was just in my, I think, to increase the speed of the putt when it's at the hole. And that's a very interesting thing. If you don't have any good stats, uh, you'll not find it out and you can practice as much as you want and you probably will not get better just because you're lacking speed. And 
um, yeah, that was a eye opener for me. It was very difficult to sometimes put it like two to three feet behind the hole, but after some time, I found out okay, I'm not missing two to three putts anyway. So yeah, I I can do it. And but it's still a lot of mental work for me to put in there. Uh, it's a constant work to to not um, yeah to not lag it too much to the hole to really want to hold it. So, yeah. And exactly, and if if you allow me to show your uh, live data on screen. Uh, there is the putting dispersion from Lucas's 2022 season. And as he was just mentioning, there is a work to be done on the aggressiveness, especially on mid uh, distance putt where he needs to give himself a chance. And as you see on the bottom left, there's a whole percentage and there's also a short percentage. And then when we get the slide down, we can see that the short percentage start to appear uh, from three to four meters at 12.5, but four to five, it jumps all the way to 23.5, which is almost one out of four balls to not reach the hole out of that distance. And when you go to five to six, 22, and it's actually, and then six to nine, 30, which would make sense on a longer putt. But this, this, this really is something that we are working towards and making sure that that aggressiveness and that confidence that not only he can make the putt back because he's almost at 100% on that, but also he can get that in uh, and get more confident that two-footer mm -hmm. pass that he was just talking about. And I'm using Spider for so many years, and I love maths, I love I love numbers, I love stats, so I really like looking into it after every round. Of course, I'm sometimes tired and not motivated, but at a, at the end of the day, it's only 10 to 15 minutes. For me, it's, it's only 10 minutes. Um, there's no excuse not to do it. Um, I know I'm still sometimes not doing it uh, when I should, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I try to keep improving on that part as well. Uh, but yeah, it's it's so important, and like I said, it's it's so easy going, and and that's the big one of the big differences to a lot of other uh, apps or whatever. That I, I feel like it's not only the information and the help I get from you, Cedric. It's also the workability. And whenever there's a course not in there, it's, yeah, you just put it in and work. So, um, yeah, and that's key. I don't have time half an hour every day. I don't have time an hour. Um, I have to stretch. I have to practice. I have to call my coach. I have to call my wife. I have, to, yeah, so many <laughs> things. And, um, yeah, efficiency is key. And if you get efficiency with the results, so that's that's big bonus. So, yeah. That's Productivity. Cool. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Uh, maybe Chris, you can uh, uh, you can tell us how you use it because I know you love data as well. You love stats. You love to look at it. Um, how do you how do you go about uh, a Spider in your coaching environment? Yeah, uh, what I have tried to emphasize is that all my students who uh, mean it with their improvement, with getting better in golf with a score, um, I want them to be on Spider. Uh, no, basically. And uh, basically, it's, it's self-exploring. The moment you have the data, I'd say at least three, after three rounds, basically, you know everything <laughs> normally. Yeah? Um, of course, the more rounds you have, the more uh, precise the data is. But um, you get a, a really strong tendency, I would say, after three to five rounds. And uh, what I really enjoy is when people come to me for a lesson I, and they are using Spider, I look at their... I mean, I'm a certified instructor and I, I know what to look for, actually. So I really go in there quickly, in the app, in my phone. I go, okay, he's coming. Oh, what he ha what has he been doing the last five rounds? Uh, I listen to him. What does he say? How how was his game? And he says, yeah, my driving was bad and my putting was good. And then I look at this and say, hey, it's funny. It uh, says the opposite. <laughs> and then we can talk about it. And um, yeah, that's um, I like to work on... on improving trends basically with the information I get from there. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So to finish up, uh, Lucas, you're in South Africa right now and you're mm -hmm. starting the season. You have that streak. I think you have two tournaments, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, 2022 season ready? just finished, but um, yeah, <laughs> um, I, I got ready by, by not... Um, not making too much break. 
<laughs> no, I mean, I think, I think <laughs> golf, golf is, is, is a sport that we play all year long. And um, that's the main difference, yeah. DP World Tour, to Challenge Tour, Alps Tour. You, there's no winter break. So you can't rely on the winter break. It's not like, okay, in winter I'll do this and that. No, that's not working. You have to do it straight away. If you want to improve, you've got to improve now. And obviously you need to make small changes, small, 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 small steps. Um, and I'm trying to make my winter break now even shorter because I feel like, okay, the weather is not good in, in Europe now. And also my motivation to go out and zero degrees and hit balls is, is not not as high as if I'm like here in 25 degrees and yeah there's a lot of things positive things so obviously I want to want to kick off the season good but it's also nice to just come here play golf practice work on the things that that we guys want to work on and um, yeah also try out some 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 new things and get ready for 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 January that's that's where really the season kicks off with the big tournaments in Abu Dhabi and Dubai and um, yeah, but I'm I'm happy to be here. I can't can't wait to to go on the course to play and um, yeah, it's cool. Wonderful, wonderful. I like like you said, it, it it is very important, especially for a tour player like you. The season never stops. Uh, it's an ongoing process, so you need live assessment, live key performance metrics to be able to slightly move and make the score change and it's an it's it's a very um, uh, moving environment and and that needs to be taken in consideration when do the assessment when doing the work when do the technical work and how you integrate how much you want to integrate and change because everything is very very um i would say picky it's like a formula one uh, it's like a horse mm -hmm. race everything is very very uh uh, precise and this is what I like about following you guys and, and being the consultant for you because it's a it, it's passion first but it's also the game of <laughs> let's find that little key performance metrics and let's move that just a little bit and see how it kind of gets that whole uh, uh, that whole castle cards away from the table so now it's very very exciting I can't wait to to get back on the on the saddle with you guys for sure for sure <laughs> well, thanks Cedric um I really appreciate, and Lucas, and I really appreciate your work you have done with us, uh, helping us to get him, helping him become a better player. Also, me becoming a better coach, of course. Yeah, because I learned a lot from you as well. And uh, yeah, we're really looking forward for your consulting in the future. And yes. Lucas, to you, all the best this week in South Africa. You know, my heart is bleeding for your game, and I really wish you you're going to have a great season this year. So thanks, guys. <laughs>